Hey YouTube, so this problem here is problem number 46 from the section, from chapter 4, from the section on Norton and feminine equivalent circuits. So just a reminder, a Norton equivalent circuit is, um, is basically all of the entire circuit simplified into one current source, some um, I short circuit in parallel with um, some equivalent resistance. So it's just simplifying all that and replacing it with just one current, uh, two circuit elements. That's the Norton equivalent, and the um, feminine equivalent is going to be the source transformation of that, and they go back and forth. So it's going to be some V feminine, some voltage source, in series with um, R feminine. Okay, so in this circuit here, let's go ahead and describe what it looks like. We have a 500 volt independent voltage source, um, 8 ohms here, 12, 5.2, 30, and a 10 amp independent um, current source. And we are looking for, we're interested in the load here, A, B, and it looks like it's going to be, if we were to simplify this into a Thevenin equivalent circuit, it's going to be the voltage drop across the 5.2 and the 12 ohm resistor is going to be what we're interested in for a V Thevenin. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. You can use node voltage or mesh method to solve this. Um, I happen to use the mesh method um, for just because I prefer it um, for some weird reason. And um, so, so basically, whatever this mesh current is, my V feminine is going to be 5.2 ohms times that mesh current and then 12 ohms times that mesh current. So that's going to be how I find V feminine. All right, so let's get started. So we're going to use the mesh method. If we were really clever, we would see that we could do a source transformation here and just consolidate that into one mesh method. But I like to do things in the weird way, the way that maybe you wouldn't really see it if you were stressed out in an exam. So let's say you didn't really see to do the source transformation there. We can still solve this by the mesh method. So we're going, so let's start. So that we know that this has 10 amps going through it. That's got 10 amps, right? And then this is going to have some I A mesh current, and this is going to have some I B. So the mesh method uses KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law, and says the sum of the voltage drops around a closed mesh is zero. The direction of the voltage rises in this direction, so it goes from mi minus to plus Vx in that direction. So let's write the mesh equation for mesh at at 10 amps. So that mesh equation will be minus Vx plus 30 times 10 amps minus some Ia mesh current. That's equal to zero. So mesh at Ia is going to be 30 times um, Ia minus 10 plus 5.2 Ia plus 8 times Ia minus Ib, that's got to equal zero. And then mesh at Ib is going to be um, minus 500 plus 8 times Ib minus Ia, and that's going to be plus 12 Ib is equal to zero. Okay, so now let's go ahead and inventory our coefficients with a matrix. We got I A, I B, and then V X equals. Okay, from the first equation, we have a negative one coefficient for a V X. We have three hundred, positive three hundred, which will go on the other side with the constants as negative three hundred. And then we had negative 30 for Ia and no occurrences of Ib. For our mesh equation at Ia, we have 30, positive 30 for Ia. And then a negative 300 that's going to come on the other side as positive 300. And then we have plus 5.2 Ia and then plus 8 Ia. And then here we got negative 8 for Ib and no occurrences of Vx. Our final equation is... Um, negative 500, which will go on the other side, is positive 500, and then we have 8 for IB, and then negative 8 for IA, and um, 12, positive 12, and then for IB, and zero occurrences of VX. So now we have um, 
three equations and three unknowns, and we're going to solve that with our simultaneous equation solver. So then we have three equations, three unknowns. We've got negative 30, 0, negative 1, negative 300. 30 plus 5.2 plus 8. And then we got negative 8, 0, and 300. And then negative 8, 8 plus 12, 0, and 500. Solve. And I'm going to take a second to check, because I hate it when I make mistakes on my videos. So, which, and you guys know mistakes are very easy to make. Alright, so I did come up with the same answers. So that means I'll tell you what I got. So once you put that into your simultaneous equation solver, you should come up with IA is 12.5 amps, IB is 30, and Vx is negative 75 volts. Okay. So then what we were looking for was V feminine. And we said V feminine, looking for this voltage drop, or the, we're interested in these two points right here. So V feminine then is the voltage drop across the 5.2 plus the voltage drop across the 12. Okay? And that's going to be 5.2 times IA, which is 12.5. And then plus 12 ohms times IB, and that's 30. Okay, so that 5.2 times 12.5 plus 12 times 30. So our V feminine, I'm going to double check. So then our V feminine is 425 volts. Yeah. Yep. All right, so that's one half of it. The second half of it is defined, the second half of the feminine equivalent circuit then is, um, is um, the um, R feminine. We have two ways to find R feminine. We can short the load, find I short circuit, right? Find I short circuit, and then say, that R feminine is V feminine over I short circuit. That's option one. Option two is to eliminate the effects of the power sources, and that is to short voltage sources and to open current sources. That seems to be the easier method in my opinion. So that's the method that I chose. So R feminine is the, re the, feminine, the resistance seen by the load when we eliminate the power sources so let's go ahead and restore the circuit. We're gonna open, so first we're gonna open the current sources, so that's gone. This was 30, I think. Um, yeah, that was 30. And then we're going to short the voltage sources, source. So now that is shorted. So sometimes the feminine resistance is kind of hard to see. For me it is, I'll just speak for myself. Sometimes it's hard to see. So here, we have this point here. The eight and the 12 are connected there. But the eight and the 12 are also connected here by a short circuit. So that means this, all of this, is um, eight in parallel with 12. That's gonna be one over eight plus one over 12, the inverse of that. So 1 divided by 8 plus 1 divided by 12, the inverse of that. And that's going to be 4.8 ohms. So all that can be replaced by 4.8. So now we're going to replace those two with 4.8. So we have 4.8. So now we have 4.8 in series with 5.2 in parallel with, with 30. So we have 4.8 in series with 5.2. That's in parallel with 30. So that's going to be, give me 1 over 10 plus 1 over 30, the inverse of that. So 
1 divided by 10 plus 1 divided by 30. And that's going to give me 7.5. And that is going to be my R7 in. So R7 in from then is 7.5 ohms. Now, we're going to draw our 7 in equivalent circuit, and that will be our official answer. So our official answer then is the Norton equivalent circuit is 425 volts in series with 7.5 ohms. And just because you should know it, the Norton equivalent circuit is its source transformation. So the Norton equivalent circuit is going to be V feminine over R feminine, and that gave me, or that gives me 425 divided by 7.5, 56.7 amps in parallel with 7.5. So remember, if it's easier, if the circuit is easier for you to find the Norton equivalent, but you're asked for the feminine equivalent circuit, just find the Norton and then do a source transformation to find the feminine, and vice versa. That's why it's important to know that they're just source in, uh, transformations of each other, because sometimes it's easier to find the Norton equivalent circuit, and then sometimes it's easier to find the feminine. But when you find one, you can always find the other simply by doing a source transformation. Okay, that is problem, 40, uh, problem 66. Please share, like, um, and help other people when you can. Thanks.